So when I come to describe about flow, when I'm talking to a non-gaming audience, um, I always use the example of little Johnny, you know, it's time for tea or dinner uh, or even bedtime. And his mum or dad is saying, come on, Johnny, you know, it's time for bed. And he's just engrossed in playing. And that's kind of immersion and flow is, a, an, is an element of immersion. Um, <coughs> And in regards to elderly, um, which has been primarily my research interests, um, I have conducted work using the sports genre, tennis, golf and boxing, um, on the Nintendo Wii console and the Sony PlayStation 2. And that was done 10 years ago. And on two of the three games, tennis and golf, uh, the older adults that I recruited did experience flow on the Nintendo Wii console, which at the time back in the UK was fantastic. You know, it hadn't long been out. Um, and yeah, it, it was good to, to see that. But I think, you know, as in the last 10 years, there's been very little work to, within certainly the older adult region, as well as the younger. There is work out there. I'm not saying that there isn't. But we need to continue this work. It needs to have larger sample sizes, different age groups, be it children, young adults, um, Generation X, and the older adults, baby boomers, and those over 70. We all experience gaming or technology or reading a book or watching a film very differently. And having these larger sample sizes, even intergenerational gaming, having flow or conducting an experiment to see how flow is when you've got two or three different um, members of a family. What, what happens there? Who does, does one person experience it more than the other? Um, is it just one particular genre? Is it a variety of different genres? Previous work has looked at different genres, primarily sports and um, first person shooter action. But again, this needs to be looked at more. What about puzzle casual games? Especially now with the advent of smartphones and mobile apps and mobile gaming, you've got games such as Candy Crush. That, you know, there needs to be that kind of work out there and that kind of information so that we can all learn and be it as a parent or as an academic or a gamer. What, what's, does Candy Crush give more? flow immersion to the gamer as opposed to, you know, another game such as Angry Birds. I think with intergenerational gaming, there has been some work, but again, that's still underrepresented. And if I had to choose to do flow or intergenerational gaming, I would choose the latter um, and incorporate flow as a secondary area of, of uh, exploration. There has been work published about eight, nine, ten years ago by Voida and Greenberg um, and that if anybody's interested in intergenerational gaming that's certainly uh, some papers that they need to look at but it, it's very underrepresented in the literature and I think it's like with anything you know as a family you know one person may like an action film another person may prefer comedy, you may just have to compromise on that particular film night. And I think with gaming, to bring family members, maybe Christmas or another family holiday in the year, um, some people may choose to have a sports. We all kind of know how to play tennis or boxing. Sports is, is, a, is a, an area that brings people together. And if I was to do intergenerational research, more in the future, then I would start with the sports genre, for sure. So, I think, um, I think it would have to be sports again. Um, we know of games that have been controversy in, in the past, Grand Theft Auto, um, Call of Duty. Not all older people want to play those type of games, and certainly in my own previous research, Older people have said, no, don't want those fighting, shooting games. We want 
a game so there's education, a reason to play, they want a purpose. And I think depending on the parents, depending on the child's age or the, their children's age, you know, they may want their kids to play a game that has some form of reason, purpose, educational standpoint. It doesn't have to be primarily game-based learning, but the whole shooting, fighting that you can access through Grand Theft Auto and Call of Duty, obviously they have classifications against them, but sometimes they, you know, young kids below those age groups do access. And so I think from, to answer your question, it would have to be sports again, because then we, we all know roughly, we know how to play tennis, we know how to bowl, kind of golf. Um, and I think from a, a young child, maybe 10 or younger, they can see their parent or grandparent standing, pretending to hold a golf club or a tennis racket. It's those mental models. I think over the years I've um, worked with several um, different types of older adults across the UK um, and also in my work in Germany. And I think, again, we're back to the purpose. Why, why would a, an older person want to play? <clears throat> and this, the notion that Europe, um, with Horizon 2020, active, healthy, ageing, we have an ageing population, be it in the UK, Turkey, and internationally. And people are living longer. People want to maintain physical activity and health, healthy fitness. And video games can offer that as well as that intergenerational bridge, um, as well as fun and a form of entertainment on one evening in the home. And I think breaking down those barriers, it's talking to older people, to different communities. Um, if a person uses technology maybe to Skype with their family or friends, um, and they've got a friend who's who wants to do that or wants to use social media platforms it's it's hearing it's word of mouth isn't it you can maybe read and say oh yeah that sounds good but until you're told by a friend yeah this is good i can share this with you or whatever you're not you know you may still be apprehensive and, and i think it is just word of mouth and i think with gaming and with active healthy aging with the notion of having fun and entertainment it's it's having that community element. And I think if um, communities of older people were introduced to gaming because of, you know, it could keep them physically active, they can maybe play games together and have bowling leagues, for example, <clears throat> that, could, that could give them a whole new different outlet and something that they may never have considered in their life up to that point. But without asking and without trying, um, I think maybe for some they would be apprehensive because it's it's learning something new, and without you know we can all make mistakes or our friends would laugh at us if if we did something silly. And I think with gaming you can't really take yourself too serious because that's not the nature of it. So I think it's it's a mixture of community, family, but I think younger kids or younger family members if they're gamers or they're into technology as well they could also assist and help out their parents or grandparents and say you know this is a good thing let's play together let's get the Wii out and let's have a game of golf or a little bit of tennis and what is nice about the Wii and Microsoft Connect with it all being gesture and motion based if you're not too good on your legs or you can't move around too much, you can still play. Um, and that's, I think that's just fantastic. So I think first and foremost, having games specifically aimed at older people with that title of this is, you're old, this is for you, I don't think would be a good, um, a good thing. However, I think from a designer developer standpoint, as well as from social research, bringing everybody together from the very beginning. If a developer wanted to create a game that um, targeted older people as well as younger people, 
bring everybody together in the room and start discussing what do you what do you do in your spare time you might enjoy skiing or reading or sewing or something like that and it's having that those interests because you need to capture the older population's thoughts but also for older people they may want a game that you know we there's fantasy games we, we know gaming is about escapism and being able to do something in the virtual world and get away with it as opposed to not doing it in the real world and ending up in big trouble. So it's figuring out and talking with the target audience. But I think having a game or a series of games specifically aimed at older people, I don't think that would be the right approach. But I think having different generations or, yeah, different generations. You've got Generation X. Um, I know I'm one of them and my needs and requirements are very different to younger generations and to older. And I'm sure bringing everybody together, but it's not just the concepts, it's the marketing, the cost. Where would an older person go and buy this game? Would it be free from the library? Um, they wouldn't, it's something that I've looked at very briefly in some of my previous research. Would, would older people want to go and purchase it? Would they have um, an advertisement in a specific magazine, say a sewing magazine or a fishing magazine? So it's, it, it's, it's a very big question and there's not just one answer. Um, but I think there should be more work done in the game study and the giant technology fields um, to understand um, the marketing and the purchasing behaviours of older people as well as younger people because this ageing population, this situation is not going to go away and you know you could have a 10 year old now but in 40 years time with the technology developments what's going to be in 40 years time and what what will their demands be as well as the current generation X and the baby boomers. <laughs>